Hey, sports fans, Larry to run blog run. This is conversations with Larry. And our topic today is USATF media, some modest suggestions. Um, I started writing about track and field in 1983. My first article was about America's first sub four minute miler, Don Bowden. Um, I was uh, introduced to him with uh, Coach Ted Banks, um, and uh, it was a lot of fun. My first Olympic trials is a media person. Well, I went to the 84 Olympic trials in the 84 Olympics, working for Runner's World. Um, 88, uh, I was unable to go to, 92, obviously. Uh, but I started dealing with the folks at USA Track and Field, um, even you know before that TAC, and uh, for a long time it was Pete Cava, the late Pete Cava, who was there for years, and uh, Tom Serber, and Pete and Tom. Um, once they figured out that you really cared for the sport, would go out of their way to help us. Uh, there's been many people in. Um, USATF's uh, communications department over the years that I've dearly loved and respected. And at the current time, uh, Susan Hazard is the, I believe her title is uh, communications manager. And Susan has always been great and has worked very hard to get us as media members the information we need. She's protective of the athletes and protective of the sport. And I appreciate that. Uh, and this isn't, uh, and I'm I'm going to be really careful, like I, I did uh, on a recent piece um, on British athletics, uh, not mentioning staff, because I don't want anybody to get in trouble. I think what USATF does at the major events um, is fantastic. The information they provide me each day, a daily kind of a rundown of the athletes, medal counts, quotes, all that stuff's fantastic, and putting together some of the pressers that they do. Um, that's where I got to meet Vashti Cunningham, which uh, back in, oh God, it's got to be 2015, and uh, who I really enjoyed, uh, and I've saved all, saved the several interviews I've done with her. But it's the way to meet athletes, and this has been going on for 30 years, and I appreciate what they do. But right now, um, it seems that... Um, I'm hearing more globally than I'm hearing nationally. And uh, at the end of the day, my first magazine was American Athletics and American Track and Field. And I love American Track and Field, and I want to write more about it. So here's some modest suggestions for whoever will listen to this. Uh, first of all, uh, a weekly release sent to 50 to 100 media people who are still alive in the U.S. who are covering track and field. Um, perhaps once or twice a month interview opportunities. Um, I recall doing an interview with um, Sarah Hall and the uh, other athletes that were at London. I thought that was fantastic. I'd like to see a couple of those a month. Put some story ideas for us right now because this pandemic is going to continue to go. And there's great stories and great athletes out there. Uh, right now, I'm, we're, we're going to have a Sam Kendricks interview up. We're going to have, we just did Ryan Krauser. We've got Sandy Morris. Um, we've done Des Linden. You know, there, there's a plethora of American athletes out there that we could write about. And we just like to hear that USATF is alive. And that while they're dealing with the pandemic, they're still, still thinking about the sport. This is a great time to build the resumes of some young athletes. Give us a chance to interview them. Um, I will interview them. Uh, give me an opportunity and we will do it. We want to get the story out. We're doing three to four days of interviews a week right now. And that's what helps build the sport. USATF is the federation that leads the historically the finest athletics team in the world. USA Track and Field, Team USA, whatever USOC wants to call it, has a better one-loss record 
than any sport in the U.S. Uh, and it's not made up because guess what? We compete against 209 other countries, okay? Um, why is USA have, why does USA have the best track and field team? Well, we got 330 million people. We've got kids of every uh, ethnic background, every body type, and track and field has an event for everybody. And the truth is, track and field is a pretty inexpensive sport to manage and an inexpensive sport to compete in. Um, and I want to continue to see it that way. I remember going to my first world championships in 1995 and sitting in front of me was a gentleman who didn't think I spoke French or understood it at least, and was telling a Swiss TV crowd about how bad track and field was in the U.S. and how no one even knew what the hell it was. And uh, I interrupted him and did the only line in French that I knew. And so the Swiss crowd talked to me for a little bit and I explained that there were 22,000 high schools at the time that had track and field, one in 0.1 million kids in high school sport. They didn't even know that. I explained that there was about 5,600 clubs. This is 1995. And that we were kind of in an ebb and flow. There's times when uh, I said our, our sprinters were good, our jumpers were good, our throwers were good. Our distance runners sucked at the time. Uh, there was a few good ones out there. Bob Kennedy, uh, Mark Krogan, you know, uh, Steve Holman, Rich Kenna. Uh, but, you know, there was, there was some pretty mediocre stuff too. And that's what they were looking at. Um, I've watched the sport ebb and flow over the 44 years that I've been involved with it, 45 now. And uh, I think we're at one of our highest points. And even with the pandemic, we have great stories. And we can literally have a story each week. And I would challenge USATF if they want to put a story in front of uh, Chris Chavez and myself and the folks at Flow Track and Ross at Runner Space. We'd love to cover those things. We're looking for content. Our, we have more people reading about and being enthusiastic about track and field now than we ever have. Our numbers, when we cover remotely this last summer, all the meets that were put on were through the roof. And the, the interest was through the roof. Um, the meets that we had in the UK, this, or not in the UK, but through Diamond League, people loved. And the meets in Europe were fantastic as well. Um, and I want to see, I want to write more about American athletes. There's great stories. So, you know, I ask, ask uh, Max Siegel, who I have no bones with. I think, you know what, Max does a difficult job. There's some things I have questions about, but, you know, you have questions in a free society. That's what it's supposed to be. But what I would ask USATF to do is, and I know it's difficult now, and I know you guys are working, working remotely, but, heck, you give me an idea on a piece to write about an athlete or a, a subject in the sport on a weekly basis, You'll have 52 stories a year. I want to see American track and field continue to grow. And uh, I love the sport. And you can tell from the hard work that guys like Jonathan Galt and Chris Chavez and the folks at Flow Track and the folks at Runner Space and some of the other sites that are out there, fast women, do they love the sport. Give us things to write about. Um, that's how you get more bang for your buck for sponsors too. So, hey, some modest suggestions modeled after Jonathan Swift's modest suggestions to curbing the excess population in Ireland. Go read it. It's from about 1716. Um, great piece. Anyway, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Conversations with Larry. And I was offering some suggestions to my friends at USATF on getting me to do more stories on American track and field. If you like Run Blog Run, and, you know, uh, you're free to like it. Uh, like us on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. If you love us, then love us on by subscribing to the YouTube. I like to say the YouTube because it just infuriates my son and Mike Deering too. And thanks, for Mike Deering, for producing this and putting up with you know all my various meshes and digressions and all that other kind of crap. Anyway, Larry Eater, Run Blog Run, Conversations with Larry, USATF, Modest Suggestions, signing off.